Well, we've made it to Thursday of Holy Week of Prayer. And church, I, I can't tell you how ready I am for Saturday and Sunday of this weekend to get here and for the chance to get to gather together with you and have four services here on our campus and celebrate Easter together after, after missing that opportunity to, to be here for Easter over the last year. Um, and I hope that you're looking forward to that with great anticipation as well as we get to, to celebrate and praise and worship our, our risen Savior together. Well, Thursday of Holy Week, the week leading up to Jesus' crucifixion, is often referred to as Holy Thursday, or, or maybe you've heard the term Monday Thursday. And that term Monday literally can mean uh, the mandate or the new commandment that we'll see here in, in, in John chapter 13 here in just a moment. And so as we begin to set the tone here, we've seen in, in the Holy Week so far, we've seen the triumphal entry. We've seen uh, the cleansing of the temple. We've seen the cursing of the fig tree. We've seen um, the, the rebuking of the Pharisees. We've seen Jesus teaching in the temple. We've seen all of these moments, but it's on Thursday where the week begins to take a, a very somber uh, turn, a very uh, somber moment. You see there in chapter 13 of John, verse 1 says this, and I think this kind of shows us the moments to come well. It says, Before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world to the Father. You see, to summarize what's about to happen, Jesus knows. He knows that as Thursday arrives, it's the day to celebrate the Passover feast, and as Thursday arrives, he knows that his time here on earth has come to an end, has drawn to an end. He knows what the will of the Father is for him. And so he begins to walk into this moment, and I, I don't think we can separate uh, Jesus' humanity from his deity. And so we understand that Christ is walking into these moments, uh, feeling the emotion and the weightiness of what is about to come. We continue on in John 13, verse 3 says, Jesus knew that the Father had given everything into his hands, that he had come from God, and that he was going back to God. I want you to just, just think about this picture with me for a minute. We've seen Jesus and the disciples in Bethany as they begin to prepare for the Passover. Uh, Peter and John go ahead to Jerusalem to find a place where they can have Passover dinner together. And we've seen the picture often of Jesus and his disciples sitting around a big table or even reclining back in a, a moment of feasting, a moment of celebration that they would have known all too well. A moment of celebrating what God has done for, for bringing the Israelites and freeing them out of Egyptian captivity. And what was supposed to be a celebratory moment. And so Jesus is there, and we pick up here in verse 4, and it says, So he got up from supper, and he laid aside his outer clothing, took a towel, and he tied it around himself. Next, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to dry them with the towel that was tied around him. You see, the picture we see here is our Messiah, our Savior, the Son of God washing the feet of his disciples. And the picture we get is that not even they can believe it. Verse 6 goes on to say, He came to Simon Peter who asked him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, What I'm doing you don't realize now, but afterwards you will understand. You will never wash my feet, Peter said. Jesus replied, If I don't wash you, you have no part with me. So he goes on to wash the disciples' feet, and he, he completes washing all of their feet. And then it brings me to one of my favorite verses here in this passage. Verse 12 says, When Jesus had washed their feet and put on his outer clothing, he reclined again and said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? And church, today as we reflect on this passage, that's the first question that I'll ask us. Do we know what Christ has done for us? And I ask that in more than an intellectual way or even a reflective way, even more so than just a knowing maybe the facts or the pictures or what we've seen in a, in a, in a video or been taught years ago. Do we know more than just knowing the stories? Do we know Christ and what he has accomplished for us? 
You see, this is a moment of transition for Jesus and his disciples. As we've talked about, the Passover feast is a moment where they sacrifice the sacrificial lamb and, and it becomes a time where they celebrate God delivering the Israelites from captivity. And now these, these elements of the Passover will be perfected, if you will, where Christ has now transitioned from that to literally inserting himself as the once and for all sacrificial lamb, making a sacrifice on the cross, and his life, death, burial, and resurrection, a sacrifice for us so that if we repent of our sin and trust in him, we too can have forgiveness of our sin and eternal life through Christ Jesus. Do we know what Christ has done for us? I'll skip ahead in the story. You're, you're probably familiar with it. He goes on to predict his betrayal. He knows that Judas is going to betray him later that night and into the morning. And so at this point, uh, soon the, the disciples and Jesus are going to leave this space to head to the Garden of Gethsemane. But before he does, this, he, he gives, as we get to verse 31... It says, when he had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Children, I am with you a little while longer. You will look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so now I tell you, where I'm going, you cannot go. I want us to close with verses 34 and 35. You see, the theme of today and our Holy Week of Prayer prayer guide is love. We would be remiss if we read this passage and didn't see the elements of love all throughout it, the washing of the feet, the explanation of what's to come, the, the willingness of Christ to lay down his life as the sacrificial lamb. And he closes verse 34, I give you a new command, love one another, just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Church, that word new there is not necessarily about a new creation or something that started today. You see, that teaching of love has been evident. But what we're seeing is Christ has become an even better example, a, a perfect example of what true love looks like. And he's calling us to love our brothers and our sisters in Christ just as he has loved us. Christ who is willingly laying down his life so that you and I can have eternal life, so that you and I can be restored to God the Father. He's calling us to love one another as he has loved us. Church, I'll close with that challenge for us today. As we meditate on God's word today and in the days to come, may we feel the challenge and the conviction to love one another as Christ has loved us that the outside world would see us as believers in the body of believers in the church and that the bond that joins us would be different. The love that we have for one another would be different and that people would see Christ through that and in us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you again for today, for the joy of, of knowing you, for the joy and the truth of your word and the joy of Easter. Father, the, the chance to get to worship the risen King. And so, Father, as you've called us to love one another, as you have loved us, remind us that that is, that is not something that we can accomplish in and of ourselves. Father, but that you have already made perfect the love that you have instilled in us. And, Father, you have equipped us and, and empowered us and you've called us to love one another in that way. And it's only through our relationship with you and through your spirit that we'll be able to accomplish that. So Father, challenge us in that. And may we seek to do that today and in the days to come. We probably see in your name. Amen.